Welcome to the Oracle Fusion Cloud reporting course. Let's kick things off with a quick recap of our journey so far. In episode one, we uncovered all the powerful reporting tools in Oracle Fusion Cloud, breaking down their purpose and when to use each. If you are still unsure which tool fits your reporting needs, be sure to check it out. In episode two, we took our first step into OTBI reporting with a hands-on approach, learning how to build an OTBI report from scratch using the BI Composer tool, a beginner-friendly way to dive into analytics. Now, it's time to level up. Today, we are exploring a more advanced method to create OTBI reports using a tool called BI Answers a powerful tool that goes beyond BI Composer to help us extract deeper insights from our data. As the name implies, BI Answers enables us to answer key business questions by transforming raw data into meaningful insights. In today's hands-on exercise, let's use the BI Answers tool to answer these key business questions. Along the way, you will master these essential BI Answers capabilities. My name is Siva Khoya, an Oracle Ace and Certified Professional. If you are ready, let's go. I will start today's hands-on exercise by answering this business question using BI Answers tool. How does our company's supplier spending change from month to month and what trends we can uncover. To answer the question, I will navigate to BI Answers tool. To navigate to BI Answers tool, I will click on Navigator, scroll down, Tools, Reports and Analytics. If you remember, in my previous episode, to create an ODBI report using BI Composer, I clicked on Create and then Analysis. But now we are going to create an OTBI report using BI Answers tool. To navigate to BI Answers tool, I will click on Browse Catalog. From here, we can access BI Answers tool from the header banner. There is a drop down here. Here you can select Analysis. The second way to access BI Answers tool is to click on the Home button. Here you can see Create menu. Under Create, we can select Analysis to navigate to BI Answers tool. The first step in creating an OTBI report, whether in BI Composer or BI Answers, is selecting the subject area. Since our focus is supplier spend, I will search for payable subject area. You will notice that as I start typing, the search results update dynamically in real time. From the search results, I will select Payables, Payments, Disbursements, Real-Time since our focus is on supplier spend. When I hover over the Browser tab, it displays Oracle Transactional Business Intelligence Answers, the name of our tool. On the left-hand side, I can see the selected subject area. Now I will proceed with choosing the necessary fields for our report. I will start with business unit name. I will expand the business unit folder. Then I will double click on business unit name. Next, I will scroll down under payment header details, under payment information. I will select the payment date. Either I can double click or drag and drop this field into the report selection area. Next, I will scroll up payment amounts and I will select payment amount. Rearranging fields is simple. Just select a field and drag it next to the desired field. Here I will reposition the business unit name to appear after the payment date. That's how to do it. Let me revert my changes. To analyze month over month supplier spend, we will derive the spending year from the payment date using a formula. To add formula on a field, I will go to field settings and click on edit formula. Here I can use SQL function year. 
I'm trying to derive the spend year from the payment date. I will open and close parenthesis. Let's update the field label by selecting the custom headings. And here I can update my column label. And I will click OK. Next, let's add a field to our report that displays the spending month. To do this, I will drag the payment date onto our report and derive the spending month just how we did for the year. I will click on field settings, then edit formula. This time I will use the SQL function month to derive the spending month. Let's update the column label for this field as well by clicking custom headings. Let's label our field payment month. I will click OK. Now let me demonstrate how to add a filter to our report to display targeted data. Without this, selecting all data from our tables could lead to performance issues. For our use case, let's display only spend data from 2021 and beyond. Let me show you how to set this up. I will select the field on which I want to apply the filter, field settings, and then select filter. I will select the criteria to ensure payment year is greater than 2020. I will click OK. This is how to add a filter to our report. Now we are ready to view the output of our OTBI report. To view the output, I will select the results tab. In the results tab, we can now see the supplier spend for each business unit broken down by spend year and month. Let's go back and make a couple of changes to our report. Let's make business unit a prompt which enables users to select a business unit to view the supplier spend. Next, let's replace the numbers with month names to make it more user friendly. I will start with the first change, making business unit name a prompt field. It's simple, hover over the business unit name field until a handle appears. Drag the handle upward until a table prompt is visible, then release it. After I released it, now you can see business unit name is a prompt field with a drop down option. Next, let's make the second change, which is to replace payment month numbers with the actual month description. In order to make this change, I navigated to criteria tab. Next, I will edit the formula for payment month field. Now I will replace this column formula with a case statement. The formula that I pasted here will replace payment month numbers with actual month descriptions. I will click OK. Now if I refresh my results by clicking on results tab, now you can see payment month descriptions instead of numbers. This is the power of BI Answers tool, which is much more flexible when you compare with the BI Composer tool. Now it's time to save my report. To save my report, I will click Save button on my right hand side of the page. First, I need to choose a folder to save my report. I will save it in my personal folder to keep it private. Then I will assign a name to the report and click OK. This report output is fine, but the tabular format makes it difficult to interpret this data. Now I'll show you how to enhance this with a data visualization for better clarity. Adding a new view for this data is simple. In the header banner, click the new view drop down. From the list of views available, I will select graph, bar, and then select a vertical visualization. In the bottom right corner of my page, there is a view section where each view has its own dedicated tab. We can modify the properties of individual views by selecting any section and clicking on the edit button. Now I will modify the graph property. So I will select the graph view, then click on edit button. Now we can see the graph view. By default, the system automatically assigns the payment month as a prompt. I want to remove it from the prompt section and move it to the bar section as a group by field. After making the change, the graph is now updated, clearly illustrating how supplier spending varies between two business units for each time period. For example, in October 2024, supplier spending under the Supremo US business unit is close to 100 million, whereas for the same period, 
US one business unit spending is significantly lower at around 40 million. If you want to take a closer look at individual business unit spending, I can make business unit as a prompt by dragging the business unit into the graph prompt section. The graph is now updated. This is the spending pattern for Supremo US business unit. I can change the business unit to US one business unit. This is the spending pattern for US one business unit. I hope now you have a foundation in using the BI answers tool. Here is a challenge for you. Can you use what you have learned so far to answer this second business question using a pie chart? Please share your output in the comments below so that I can validate or if you have any questions, drop them below. I'm happy to help. Good luck with this exercise and I hope you learned something new today. That's all from me. See you in the next one.